Good morning. My name is Eddie Tofbeck. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And this is the London Morning Commentary on Thursday, the 12th of July. We're looking at some charts. And I'd like to start off with one major currency, and the one's going to be the Japanese yen. Now, if we look at this chart, you can see something quite interesting. I've, I've outlined it there, which is the diamond pattern. Now, sometimes the diamond pattern is a continuation pattern, which is uh, what this is this particular instance. Sometimes it's a reversal pattern. Now, I've marked both targets for that. X1, 113.65 if it was continuation. X2, around about 106.50 if it was a reversal. And as you can see, it has become a continuation pattern. And we've seen that move up over the last say two weeks or so, maybe three weeks, but explosively yesterday we had the big move up. Now prior to that we had a weekly key reversal up, which was an indicator we we're going to move higher, a key reversal down that had failed, and we'd also built together some other sort of key reversals in there, most notably on Monday. Yesterday we had a key reversal up as well. So imagine that, we had a key reversal up on the Monday and a key reversal up yesterday. And then yesterday's one, we broke this huge 2015 to date downtrend. Uh, and that was running through about 1.1175. Uh, we've broken up above that, we've closed above that, and we're now looking to target the 113.65. And that's the most interesting one, I think, at this particular point of all the major currencies. I mean, there's lots of movement in some of them, but this one is really, really interesting from a technical point of view because you'd need to have consecutive closes below the 50% Fibonacci of this whole move from March, and that would be down at 108 and a half. So it's very, very unlikely we're going to have that. So we're finishing up with the, the yen, and we're going to move on to a minor currency. In this particular instance, I'd like to look at the Mexican peso. Now, in many ways, the dollar Mexican peso has been the dollar Trump trade. Anytime the US has done well, the dollar's gone well against it. Anytime he hasn't done well, the Mexican peso's gone uh, well. Now, this is not starting to lose that association in many ways. But what's interesting here is this move down we've had. Now, first off, let me set the scene. We're within the July 2017 to April 2018 Andrews Pitchfork. That's those three parallel lines you can see growing um, across the top. Uh, um, and middle of the market and also below the market around about 118.54. Uh, what we've had is the breakdown through the medium moving average which is 1919, the long moving average is 1907. We've had one close below, a reversal back above it and then a key reversal um, on Tuesday back below it. The move back up yesterday wasn't enough to get above the medium moving average. In fact, it got sort of bogged down in the long moving average around about one, at 1907. So we're back below that. It's anticipated now that we may see further pressure. The only real support ahead of 1854, which is the lower time, let's say 1850, just for 1850, 1860 for, for uh, continuation purposes. The only thing below it that's really of any significance is uh, 1878, we have some congestion from some, moving out, uh, from some Fibonacci levels. But there's nothing really else there. You'd need closes above the most recent 50% um, Fibonacci level, which is at 1920, um, to, or even 1945, which is the recent 50% Fibonacci, uh, Fibonacci, to reverse this position up. It's not happening at the moment. I think it's more likely we'll see a move down to that 1854 area and see if there's some support there. There should be and then we'll see what happens. But at the moment, that's what's looking in this one, and, and that's a nice, interesting tar chart to finish off on, on, particularly on the currencies. Now, the other thing is I'd like to look at is uh, a commodity. And the one I've chosen is Ice Winnipeg uh, Canola, an unusual one, but one which is, um, it's really interesting because it's got a great pattern on it, two great patterns on it, actually, and it's coming to fruition. It's coming to the, to, the, to the final target areas. Now, the first big pattern on it, as you can see there, is, is it, I put on it, is it head and shoulders top, the crowned head, and I left that on there like that for, for, for many months. Um, it actually is, and we've had that break through the neckline. And as you can see on the way down, we had a key reversal down, Japanese candlestick bearish army, another key reversal down, a weekly key reversal up, which 
failed. And then a bearish harami and another bearish harami. And we've now moved down through uh, the new, well, not quite the new lows for the whole year, but the most recent lows. We've broken the 2017 to date uptrend. And uh, that was running through at 498.60. We closed well below that. And now we have the two targets. The first X, as you can see on the bottom right hand side, that's the head and shoulders target area, which is sort of around about the 493 area. X1 relates to the action from basically late May to where we are now. From late May to where we are now, if you look at that action, that is a bear flag. And a bear flag target is an overshoot through the head and shoulders down to 489. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stop there, but that's the target, and we're about to fulfill those. We've got a little bit more to work to do, but it's a good example of a head and shoulders target, which is compounded in together with a bear flag. And, and you'd need to really punch up over 510 over the, the recent moving average, uh, the recent downtrend, or, uh, and ideally over 512, which is the whole January to date 50% Fibonacci level to actually say that this chart, that this move is not going to happen. And that seems very, very unlikely. And that's a nice one to fill on, on, on the commodity side of the general commodities. I'd like now to move on to a metal. And the one I've chosen to look at is LME Tin. But before we move to it, I could have chosen the easy option. I've spoken many, many times about copper. And we had a huge move down in copper. The monthly key reversal, which I've been going on and on and on about, happened and we saw the move down it but the LME tin is interesting for another reason and we'll have a look at it now. Now LME tin as you can see from there it's moved down but I draw your attention to the last few days um, where everything else was heading down to the basement even aluminium was moving down all uh, zinc was moving down copper was obviously moving down this one actually turned round and moved up on the Tuesday. Why? And I draw your attention to the little circle I've put there. There are two patterns or two sort of uh, chart indicators which I've put on there which uh, cross over. The first one, which dates from the March to April period, is a very similar, very flat forward uh, channel. And that's where you can see the top shallow line pointing to the right and the one which is furthest to the left back in March, starting in March. That's a channel, and that's re really where the market's been moving down within. And it's been a good channel. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a perfectly fine channel. Why should it specifically be this week, and why should it? I mark it as a circle round about? I actually said it was going to be Wednesday, but Tuesday, Wednesday was, was fine. It's because the uh, Andrews Pitchfork, which is from the April to June period, which is those three lines, the three times that you can see moving down from April and starting in June down to a very sharp, uh, more acute angle uh, down to the right. The middle tie crossed over with the lower channel. Now crossovers are really important when you've got these sort of things happening, especially to similar patterns. Andrews pitchfork with shift pitchforks, channel lines with necklines, all, all combinations of those. And this was an, a combination which I highlighted uh, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, when I could actually see this starting to happen that it was going to go down to that sort of level. And I said, somewhere around the Wednesday, yesterday, of the, the action, there will be either increased volatility or a sharp move down, more likely, because we have all the moving averages pointing low, we have all the angle of attack of all the tines and the channels pointing lower. And so I put that in there, said, that's your day, look out for that one. And lo and behold, we had the sharp move up on the Tuesday, a sucker trap effectively, uh, and then we had the big move down. And this is now uh, a, a new low for, for 2018, and we're likely to see potentially a ma maybe even a move down to the lower time. The lower times are 18725. That's quite a significant move. That gives up all of this year's, well, even from December's action to where we are now. And so I thought it was an interesting one to look at, and as a chart, I'm pretty much going to leave it there at that. Now, I'll finish off with an index. And I've chosen the S&P futures, the, the stalwart we've always seen. Why the S&P futures? And it's a messy chart. There's a lot of lines on it because there's a lot of things going on in it. It's a straightforward 
a fairly bullish chart, but I'm drawing your attention to something, it's an echo, I'd call it. Um, there are three lines you can see that shoot off off the top of the market. That's the Andrews Pitchfork uh, from the 2016-2018 move, all the way back to February when it broke. Now, normally with any form of, of, of pitchfork or, or uh, trend line, you discard them once they're broken. But this one has echoes, specifically the lower time. You can't have a market that's been running within the 2016, 2018 Andrews Pitchfork, and it has been a beautiful market to run within that, without it having some echoes. And the echoes are the market still wishes to try higher, but it's using the lower pitchfork, which is at 28, 27 at the moment, as a resistance area rather than its traditional form as a support. It's using it as a resistance area to any rally on a high. But it's dynamic resistance. It's going up each day. Every few days it goes up. It'll be up over 28, uh, 40 by the end of next week. So assume roughly in the order of around about 10 uh, points a, a week higher. This is really, really interesting. Now, we, we've, we've held at the March high at 2801, I think it is, and then come back off again. But if we turn around and start moving higher, it wouldn't surprise me if we go through that and then halt around that lower tie. So it's something to put in there and watch because it's a really interesting way that that echoes still, even though it's been broken, the echoes still in the market. You'd need consecutive closes below the medium moving average of 27.10 to actually make the market neutral and below the long between, uh, which is 26.81 to actually make it bearish, neither of which seem likely to happen at the moment. But it is an interesting one to see that we can actually have a higher market yet it being capped by a bullish dynamic pattern. And that's what I'd like to leave you with. So in the meantime, thank you for listening and watching, and good trading.